Dive in on Gotta Watch the Tape from Cleveland.com. Doug Maurice, Scott Paxco, Ellis Williams. Again, time to go through draft picks, and it's Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, the second round pick for the Browns. He gets the full Gotta Watch the Tape treatment today. So, JOK, two year starter at Notre Dame. He redshirted his freshman year, had a foot injury uh, <clears throat> that cost him like all but two games of his second season. So, basically, he's a two year, two year guy in college. Um, 2019, he returned. He led Notre Dame in tackles and tackles for loss and sacks. And then last season, he won the Butkus Award as the nation's top linebacker. And it's funny because when I was describing him as a linebacker leading up to the draft, I kept getting angry texts. He's not a linebacker. Like we need to come up with some sort of new position for a guy like him. But the Browns are calling him a linebacker. So that's that's what we're going to do. Um, so he did all that, winning the Butkus Award, leading his team in tackles, tackles for loss. Um, while getting the majority of his snaps in the slot instead of in the box area where linebackers normally roam around. He topped 300 snaps in 2019 and 2020 in the slot and a little over 200 in the, in snaps in the box in both those seasons. So not, I guess, traditionally what, what we think of uh, as a linebacker, which again leads to the whole conversation around him is, uh, is his versatility. Pro Football Focus is a big fan uh, he graded 82.3 in coverage, 75 and a half against the run, 72.1 as a pass rusher. That's like the holy grail of linebacker ability right there. Like that's everything you could possibly want from a linebacker in the NFL, whether or not you want to make them, you know, an outside linebacker in, in a 3-4 that, that's rushing the passer or whether you want him to do multiple things in, in a different scheme. But he's good across the board. That's why he was so hyped uh, coming out of college. Not many linebackers excel at all of those things. At his pro day, JOK showed off all of those abilities. In the 40-yard dash, he ran 4.37, which would have been the fastest time for a linebacker at the NFL Combine going back to 2017, according to Pro Football Reference. Um, so, again, he moves very good if you want to consider him a linebacker. So when the Browns are talking about getting faster on defense this offseason, JOK is involved in that. But beyond that, uh, his broad and vertical jumps at his pro day ranked in the 199th percentiles for linebackers. And we think of those drills as measuring explosiveness. They aren't really for evaluating linebackers so much as they are for like linemen and wide receivers, cornerbacks, guys who need to get off the line quickly. But still, it's, it's impressive. He did not do the three cone or the 20 yard shuttle, which shows like change of direction and body control, which would be great things. I think he would excel at, um, but he didn't do that. But like I said, there's plenty on his film, and I'm sure we're going to see it and hear about it when Ellis gets to his portion of, of him showing off that athletic ability and change of direction and things like that. But that's kind of an overview of where we're at. Yeah, he was super hyped. He fell. We found out that it could have been because of uh, heart issues that people thought he might have. The Browns kind of squashed that. Um, and said that wasn't a concern, but they're getting a guy that everybody considers a steal, a guy who's versatile, a guy who it seems can do just about everything from the linebacker spot. On this first play, this is JOK moving from weak side backer and coming into the box to make a run stop. And Scott mentioned how he needs to avoid linemen. He does a great job doing that here. This is this whole exercise, you're going to see Alabama gain a lot of yards. And that's because they're Alabama. This is still a positive run play. They almost pick up the first down, but as we run it, notice JOK right on the snap, recognize the pulling guard. He drives on it, gives the guard a little head fake. He has no chance. The guy's so wide that he almost does his job anyway. And the left side of Alabama's line does an excellent job sealing that they're going to gain positive yards here. But JOK gets hands on, grabs cloth, and this is going to be and slides down and, and really makes an ankle tackle. And that is going to be a reoccurring theme. Scott mentioned it in his first part of the dive. He's not a good tackler, but I will highlight why that is going to be okay for him and really what his greatest strength is on defense. This, again, his ability to shut a lineman and still make a play, again, against a loaded Alabama offense. And that's Najee Harris, a guy he'll have to tackle twice a year now. This next one is exactly what he brings to a defense that is trying to compete with a team like the Ravens Lamar Jackson loves getting the edge when you're when you're the fastest player on the field 
it's where you're the most comfortable, right? This also think Tyreek Hill on an end around here. This is Devonta Smith, who's going to get a little pitch. And, and the interior rush here really helps JOK, but watch as he flushes and just works to the sideline. He recognizes, I love that initial right when Devonta gets the ball, that, that side shimmy he does right around the line of scrimmage. That's just a great technique. He sets, he evens himself, shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage shuffle shuffle sees the block takes it on he's the first again Najee Harris out there lead blocking that's a big dude he's the first to make contact and he's able to shed Najee Harris off he gets to this edge and now Demonte Smith doesn't have a lot of options right again a missed tackle but that's okay you forced Demonte Smith both to hesitate and decide am I going to break back inside where all of Notre Dame's defenders are, or do I keep trying to work outside? The play goes nowhere, and you see the fist pump celebration because JOK knows that was his play to make. Guys, we just saw, and we're going to see it really the whole breakdown, but really his speed come to life, whether it's in the hole or getting to the sideline. That's what he brings. In the end, we'll start with you, Scott, as we wrap up. Did you come away like liking the pick more, more intrigued with JOK? Like after all of this, how was your how was your view on JOK effective? Um, honestly, it was about the same as it was before I started, just because the fact that we, we were paying attention to him before the draft, because he was a guy who was targeted a lot, but it did confirm that, you know, that, that, yeah, all the, like, you know, the things that you saw in the hip with Ellis, it's, it's the stuff that, that draft scouts had, had been writing about. And it's the things that the, that the PFF grades and, and stats say he is. And, it's he's not the perfect player that they're going to plug into this defense. But like I said, he's somebody that they don't have. He's, he's the kind of player they don't have. And now the fun part is figuring out how to best use him. And, you know, I, I came away, I guess, as excited as I was before to, to see how they do use him. Yeah. I tend to like these guys if they're decent players more as I watch the tape, because, you know, you do such generic film reviews before, the draft. And then once you know who you're studying, you really dive deep on these guys. I will say this. I landed at a place where I lowered my expectations for him, especially in year one, which is completely fine. But I heightened both my understanding of why he was picked at 52 and I, his potential for me grew. I, I completely understand his ceiling and the floor is a bit scary, but that's fine because he's not going to be asked to be a guy. If the floor is bad, he just won't be out there. And then that this defense honestly probably is going to be okay with or without JOK, especially early. Let's, let's bet on that upside and see what he be, can become. That's, that, that's a sound strategy in the draft, especially when you're adding a, a piece like JOK on a defense that though doesn't need, does need some things. It doesn't need a, a stud linebacker clearly with how they're building. 